Okay, so um, we are still waiting for the autopilot features to be released in Europe. And while we're waiting, I figured I should do a test and I've been waiting for, for a long time now. And it is a consumption test again. So we are getting close to winter now in Europe. And uh, one thing that I always wanted to find out is what really reduces consumption. Okay, I have some ideas, but uh, now I actually want to test them and see how much it does. So we're going to do some tests here. We are right outside of Klöfta on the E16 towards um, uh, Kongsvinger. And there's a nice stretch here with a little bit of elevation up and down. And then uh, there's a turn and uh, runabout and we can go back. So we will actually do this track, drive 10 kilometers one direction, turn back and then drive back. So we have 20 kilometers. And because we go back to the same point we started, we compensate for wind and elevation and yeah pretty much that so uh, yeah let's get started with the first test so this is trip a we're gonna look for now and the first test I will cruise at uh, 100 kilometers per hour that's about 60 miles per hour and 62 miles per hour actually I cruise at 62 miles per hour and my settings here is um, 22 degrees Celsius inside and um, you see everything is on automatic and also it shouldn't make any difference now but if you go to driving here range mode is off yeah so um we're gonna see now uh how the the consumption will be and also the outside temperature is 10 degrees celsius so uh let me see as a courtesy maybe i should switch the units and switch the miles and Fahrenheit. And then there you go 50 Fahrenheit Our first test you see 21 kilometers which is about uh, 13 miles 204 watt hour per kilometer and that is uh, let me show you I can switch here for you okay miles see 329 yeah but um, 204 and I think what we're gonna do now is um, let's try to switch on range mode that's supposed to save energy well this is a p85 rear wheel drive with a large motor so we shouldn't make any difference maybe slightly I'm guessing maybe we go from 204 to like 202 or something yeah let's see then Second test, 203. Previous one was 204, so it's pretty much identical. So uh, on um, a rear wheel drive with a large motor, more or less, the range mode doesn't do anything. Almost doesn't do anything. It only helps if you are um, if you have a cold car, you know, then and you only do a short commute, then you don't want to waste too much energy heating up the car fast but uh, the car as it is right now it is uh, been like warmed up for quite a while I've been driving a little bit so um, range mode doesn't really do anything so what we're gonna test now is to reduce the speed and cruise at 90 kilometers per hour I'm gonna switch off range mode again temperature is still 22 degrees Celsius so let's try that cruise at 90 kilometers per hour
right, third test was as expected. So um, I drove at 90 kilometers per hour in 700, and the consumption went down to 187 watt hour per kilometer, and, and that is uh, a whopping 8% lower than 204 that we had in the first test. So now it's pretty interesting. But now I want to know what happens if I try to draft behind a truck. Now this is something that is not recommended because um, if there is some schmutz and sand then you will ruin your front your frontal area of the car. But I will test it anyway because uh, sometimes I even do it if I stay far behind, far behind, and if the road is uh, clean, then it's not too bad. But uh, again, I wouldn't recommend it for you know, daily driving. It should be like uh, emergency almost. Now we are at the first end of the route and I have to stay here and wait for another truck to arrive. I actually followed the bus on the way here and the bus was well doing about uh, 80 to 90 kilometers per hour. The buses they tend to um, drive on an uneven speed but well that's okay. So uh, that's fine now because uh, as long as we're standing still the, the trip meter doesn't run. So uh, I'm just gonna wait for another truck and then off we go back again. And the results of the drafting test was also as expected. So in the previous one, I, I mean before this one, when I didn't draft, I was doing about 90 kilometers per hour. This trip was a bit tricky on the way there. Maybe my average speed was 85 or something. And on the return, it was probably 95. So it should be about 90-ish in, in total. And the consumption was actually 11 to 12% lower than the, uh, the 100 kilometers per hour cruising but uh, compared to the 90 that was 187 this is 180 so it is better yeah it is better but again I wouldn't recommend it because I felt some sand and um, yeah stuff dirt hitting my windshield so unless you are on a really clean road which is rare in Norway but um, all right, that was it. And then one more test that I want to uh, find out. So you see, we have 22 degrees Celsius inside here. And this one, it says that AC is on. So the compressor is on most of the time. And what it does is to um, remove some of the moisture inside the car. But as for now, we don't have too much moisture in the car. So I'm gonna try to switch this off and then cruise at 100 kilometers per hour again. And my guess is that uh, it will be slightly lower than 200. Yeah, I have a, like, from my experience, the compressor uses some energy. So now we switch it manually off and then we'll see what happens. was uh, very unexpected so uh, on this test I did drive at 100 km per hour everything was the same except that I switched off the compressor for the air conditioning and look at there I reduced the con consumption by a whooping 4.5% that is a lot whoa so uh, that small setting here yeah oh okay okay, okay. that one it was default on, so I just switch it off. That's it. So I think for the last test now, I'm gonna lower the temperature to 19 degrees Celsius. Same thing, that one off, and then um, let's see then how low the energy consumption is gonna be. I will still drive at 100 kilometers per hour. Now the problem is that right now, the temperature inside the car is um, 
it's been set to 22 degrees Celsius. It's a bit too hot in here, so we're kind of cheating. Well, we, we are. The, the results are not correct because um, we need to lower the temperature to, you know, the the working temperature. So as a compensation, I will just open. I can just open the windows to let out some air, cool down the air inside here. Yeah, maybe for a minute or so, and then uh, we should be good to go. So you see on this test, which was uh, lower the temperature to 19 degrees Celsius inside, it was almost identical to the previous one when I had 22 degrees Celsius inside. Actually, it was hovering at, when well, the previous one was 195, this was 193, but this one was actually 195 until I almost stopped and then it suddenly dropped to 193, so barely any difference. And that's a whooping three degrees Celsius difference. And um, I feel a big difference in the comfort because uh, at 19 degrees, it felt a little bit cold, but at 22 is comfortable. And you see, uh, I would like to wear uh, you know, just a t-shirt. I don't feel like wearing a jacket or something inside. So, so how can it be that uh, the consumption is almost identical? Okay, first you have to understand a little bit about uh, how the stuff works with the motor. Because the motor has, let's assume 95 to 90, 90 to 95 percent efficiency. Which means 5 to 10 percent of that energy will be wasted. Well, it's not wasted, it will be uh, in the form of heat. But that heat is not just thrown away, just like in an exhaust system on a fossil car. That heat is captured and used to heat up the cabin or battery and I have um, experienced before that it takes about one to two kilowatt of energy of heat heating energy to maintain the temperature inside a car and if you look at the trip meter we spend about four kilowatt hours on 21 kilometers and that will actually equal to an average of 18 kilowatt so if you average a trip, we are done here, 18 kilowatt is what the car on average consumes. And if you take 5 to 10% of that, you will get 0.9 to 1.8 kilowatt. And that's the heating you get. So on average, let's say, yeah, well like 1 to 2 kilowatt, 1.5 kilowatt, that is enough to keep the heat nice and warm inside a car. So actually, I think what happened was that when I lowered the temperature to 19 degrees Celsius, some of the heat that would have been you know, kept in the car was actually thrown away out. Yeah. So, um, okay, there is one more test I want to do. We have done tests now to lower the consumption. Now I'm going to do a test to raise the consumption. So I'm going to do the same thing. I have put the temperature to 22 degrees Celsius. I actually switch on the compressor again. And I'm going to cruise 100 kilometers per hour. This is going to be the last test. It's getting a bit late now. So uh, it is said that uh, the sound system here is supposed to consume a whopping 580 watt. So um, let me try to play really loud music throughout the route. But in order to um, protect my ears, I need to put some napkins in my ears so I don't uh, ruin my hair. Uh, so there we go. Uh, yeah, that should help a little bit. Okay, final test, sound test. Oof, that was pretty loud. Uh, I can't 
I can barely hear myself now. Yeah, but uh, anyway, the results. Okay, this was a bit unexpected. Um, 201 with full blast on the speakers. Uh, that should mean that uh, there are some external variations that uh, we can't control. I'm not sure why it was lower, but um, I guess we have to take into account that there's like 1-2% error margin. So, um, But as you see, uh, it wasn't 180 or 170, it was around 200 still. So uh, I can safely say that um, using the stereo is not going to cut down your um, consumption significantly. So let me see. If I look at the, um, the results now, what I found out so, so far today is that uh, using range mode in a rear wheel drive car doesn't do anything. At least when uh, if the car is uh, already heated up. Reducing the speed to 90 km per hour from 100 to 90, that makes a huge impact. Yeah. And the same thing if you draft uh, like, uh, behind a truck or a bus, that also makes a huge impact. But then again, it's not recommended because um, you got some uh, schmutz in your front. Yeah. And what surprisingly, uh, switching off the compressor, if you don't need the compressor on, if the, the the air inside here is not humid anyways, then you can switch it off. So um, that actually reduced uh, consumption by a significant value, it was like 4%. Lowering the, the temperature didn't do anything, it was uh, pretty much within every margin. And using the stereo also didn't affect it. So, um, well, I mean, it's up to you to decide whether you want to do this or that or something. But um, I mean, if I wanted to reduce my consumption, I would probably reduce the speed. And if not necessary, I wouldn't draft behind a truck or something. And as for uh, temperature, as I've shown now, you can still have um, like 22 degrees Celsius here, and you can wear a T-shirt and be you know, comfortable with that. And you can also listen to the radio; it doesn't affect it too much. Speed affects a lot. Like it's external uh, elements like wind and elevation and speed. That's what makes a huge difference. Not too much what you do inside there, except for the compressor. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, this was interesting. I actually I didn't knew about all this. I always wanted to test it, and um, yeah, now I know. And why would you want to know all this? What's the point? Well, okay, there's there's a small point. And that is that uh, still today, Teslas. I mean, most of the time, like 99% of the time, I don't care how much energy I use. Use, but there is like few times when something unplanned happen or whatever then it's always nice to know these uh, these little tricks that make you extend your uh, range a little bit so um yeah yeah that's great that's great so um thank you for watching and uh, please subscribe